Woodcutters Top Saw here. Today I'm going to go over this water storage tank, the booster pump inside the storage tank, the float system, the well head. So to start this overview video, let me first say how skilled all of these craftsmen were who kind of worked on this whole system. So originally what I did was I had that pressure tank put in with the controller right there that he's undoing now. And then those wires went to a generator. So even though there was not power on the property, I was able to get water for dust, for compaction and fire prevention. So we're taking the pressure tank out of that spot and moving it into the pump house and putting in the storage tank in the loop. I do have power finally to the pole. So now I have a 220 amp pole or panel on the pole. And then one of the first things we did was put a 40 amp breaker in there, ran number eight wire to a sub panel inside the pump house. Here's a sub panel with two 30 amp breakers. And then there are 110 volts going to these breakers to double up to give you 220 volts. The one on the left is a booster pump. And the one on the right is for the well pump. The float switch goes in there, so when the float's upside down, it turns the power off there. When it goes down, it sends 220. When the float goes up, it kills one leg. So from that sub panel, there's 220 volts coming down in that trench to the controller right at the top of the wellhead, and then one inch pipe going from the top of the wellhead up to the pump. That copper or brass was a one-way valve, and then there's the trench. On the right is a gray conduit from the sub panel and on the left is a one inch water pipe going to fill in the 2,500 gallon storage Here's tank. That one inch pipe coming up, going through the wall. It's on a 2,500 gallon storage tank that's buried in there. It's a concrete storage tank. I have some other videos of it. And then that one inch pipe just goes right in there. And then inside of there, this right here is a float mechanism here. And when that floats down, it automatically sends power to the breaker and, and turns on the well pump. When the float is up, it turns it off. So that's one inch pipe coming in, filling in the tank. So the floats down right there, turning it on. Yep. And then it floats up and turns the water off. Yep. So here's a float going down into the tank right there. And then it's getting pulled through the top right there. And then that's going to go to the electrical panel to turn the well pump on and off. So when the tank is empty, the well pump is on. This right here, the green lid is removed for inspection. So you could set that float where you want by looking in there. You can see right there kind of how dirty the water is. So those are chlorinated tablets that go in to kind of bleach the whole system and make it potable again. So one of those little tablets treats about 20 gallons of water and they're just well treatment tablets um, designed you know, to keep everything clean. So that float comes up here and goes in here at 210 volt leads. When that float is up, one of them is turned off and then the other one is on. So then there is no power going down to the well pump. All right, so down there is a conduit going down to the well pump. And then when that float is upside down, then it sends power through this conduit right here down to the well pump and turns the well pump on. So that's how you keep this tank full of water. Is a submersible pump. It's a two horsepower, 50 gallon per minute pump is actually three phase. Here's a two horsepower Grundfos pump out of the tank. You can see it there. That top portion are the impellers that push the water up through the pipe. And then the bottom portion down here is the electric motor that drives those impellers. You can see the wires kind of coming down right there. That's what's going to drive the electric motor. And then as you go up to the top, there's a one-way valve in brass right there, and this is a two-inch pipe. Grunfoss is actually, I think, assembled in the U.S., but it's a Danish company made in Denmark. All the pieces and parts are made in Denmark. So there's a pump getting dropped back down. That lid just kind of gets sealed up. 
Those wires get hooked up, they're regulated by pressure. The controller of that pump is on the side right here and you can see it. It's this pretty complex Pentair, Pentex, and Teledrive controller that regulates the activation of that pump. So the, the well pump is driven by the flow or controlled by the flow and this Pentair controller is driven by the PSI in the system. Auto restart after 50 minutes. And then we're gonna do it to five. Five is the maximum number. It'll try to restart before you manually have to come out here and reset it. Okay. And the manual reset is I actually have to disconnect the conduit. Yep. And then I, I break open the gray valve there. Yep. Lift the whole pump up out of the tank, turn it over because it's locked up. Yep and then turn it back and then reconnect everything. Yep. So I, I wouldn't have to do any of that until... If you saw 45HZ, which was Hertz, 45HZ. If it, for some reason it's not saying PSI and it's saying Hertz, uh -huh. then you know you got a problem and you're gonna wanna hit stop. Okay. Then you're gonna throw the breaker right here. Okay. So this left hand breaker is a booster pump. Yep. The and the right I'm... hand breaker is a well pump. So if there's a broken line, if the pump, if the booster pump in the tank runs for more than 24 hours, it turns itself off. If it can't maintain a certain PSI, it'll shut itself off also. Usually if it falls below 10 PSI, it'll shut itself off. So is it possible to burn this thing up or not really? What's I mean, that? The actual booster pump. No, because if it runs out of water, it's gonna shut itself off. off. And then that pumps up through this two inch pipe into the pressure tank. And then that pressure tank always has water. All right, all set up. Let's give it a try. See the pressure inside the pressure tank right there. Going back down to the booster tank. Let's turn this hose on and see if we got some agua and any leaks. Well, this sounds good. Oh, this right here is a pressure sensor. Going back to the panel. Let's see. Oh, it's exciting. Woo That's what I call water pressure and flow. Look at that. I don't know. That might be 15 gallons per minute. It's putting out a lot of water. It's a small little hose. But it's putting out a lot of water. Ooh, nice and cold as well. Oh, that's cool. Very exciting. Nice and silent. There it is. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit like. Please comment below. If I could do this whole system again, I'd do it exact same way. 2,500 gallon underground storage tank. Booster pump. Three phase booster pump. Two horse. It'll be great. Fire prevention. Um, I'm excited. There it is right there coming off. So I got one and a half. I'll probably put a one and a half T right there to go to a fire hose and then down to the house down to the cottage and maybe I'll tee that two inch off and go up to the main house. All right, if you liked it, hit like, comment below. If you would please share this video if you know anybody thinking about putting in a system like this. Again, this is only an overview video. Uh, I'm no expert on any of this. I will say the guys who did this work though, they certainly are experts. I'm very impressed with their craftsmanship, their attention to detail, how cool this whole system came out. So thank you for watching.